What's up everyone? It's your girl Weeza and welcome back to my world and in today's video we're going to debunk mosquito bites. Now mosquitoes are annoying to say the least. They can ruin your summer barbecue, your summer camping trip, whatever. Mosquito bites are just not fun. They're itchy, swollen, they look horrible, they're really uncomfortable and they're just they're just not fun. So today I'm going to discuss a little bit more about the science behind mosquito bites. What are they? What makes them so darn itchy and swollen? And how you can reduce the inflammation and swelling of these bites altogether. I'll also discuss if some people are truly more attractive to mosquitoes than others. If it's just a myth, what is that all about? I'll also discuss mosquito repellent and how it works, the science behind it all. And lastly, I'll review this cool handy tool that I found on Amazon called the bug bite thing. It's supposed to work to reduce your mosquito bites and the swelling of them and I'll be giving you my thoughts and my total review on this. I physically took this camping and I tested it out and I have lots of stuff to tell you guys about. So if you're interested in hearing about that, make sure you stick around. If you're new to my channel, hey, what's up? My name's Weeza. I do beauty and lifestyle videos here on YouTube. A really unique thing about my channel is my debunk series. So this series right here, where I physically debunk or give you the facts or the science behind your favorite beauty and lifestyle products, trends, innovation, and kind of just help you understand them better so you can make more informed decisions. If you're interested in checking out my previous debunk videos, I'll link them down in the description bar below. So if you like these types of videos and you like me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos and don't forget to hit that like button so I know that you like these types of videos and I can continue making them for you. Now, let's just get right with it. It's gonna be so fun. Let's debunk mosquito bites. So me and mosquitoes, we don't get along. Like when I was really little and I used to get bit by mosquitoes, I would just have like craters the size of baseballs all over my body. Like my body just didn't know what to do with this. It was like, what is this? What are you giving me? It's actually quite common for young children to be affected by mosquito bites a lot more than their adult counterparts. This is because this is all just new stuff to children and we have to try to build up our immune system and our immune response to be accustomed to this new thing that's happening to them. As you get older, your body comes more familiar with mosquito bites and how to deal with them and therefore reducing the reaction or the swelling that you get when you get bit. Yes, there are some that I get that are horrible and it just really depends on a number of factors, which I will discuss in a second. But really, it's just your mosquito bite. Your body doesn't like them and trying to fight it off and trying to like save you, you know? But I mean, your body's on your side and they're trying to just protect you from the outside world. Nonetheless, mosquito bites are just not fun at any age. So the word mosquito as a whole comprises of over 3,500 different species of insects, of flies. The actual origin of the word mosquito is Spanish, mos, Mosquito, ito, meaning small, mosquito, small fly. Mosquitoes are considered one of the most deadliest animals in the entire world because they are disease vectors. What that means is that mosquitoes can land on certain things and transmit that pathogen or that disease from one thing to another. So if you just think about it, mosquitoes bite and infect to suck blood from humans, which then touch animals, which then go to plants, which can go to other surfaces, and they can just touch so many different surfaces, passing it along from one thing to another thing that can cause these diseases to spread so rapidly. It's been said that over 1 million people a year die from mosquito-borne illnesses and these are diseases like malaria, dengue fever, yellow fever, West Nile, and even things like Zika virus among many others. Okay, so Weeza, if mosquitoes do all this harm in the world, what is their role? Like, why do we need them on earth? They bite me, they hurt me, and they're transmitting diseases to me. Like, what is their purpose? What's their good in the world? Mosquitoes serve two purposes. Every animal in the animal kingdom, each one has a significant place in an ecosystem. And for a mosquito, that specific place is for food and for pollination. So mosquitoes act as food for other animals. Think of animals like birds and frogs and bats that all eat insects or mosquitoes as their primary food. Food source. Mosquitoes are also pollinators of flowers, so they drink the nectar from the flower to help them flourish and just be beautiful flowers. Without mosquitoes being able to pollinate those flowers, we wouldn't get fruits and other vegetables from those plants because they wouldn't be pollinated enough to produce. So they do serve a beneficial purpose to us humans after all. Okay, so Wiza, they pollinate flowers. Why do they gotta suck our blood? So another really important fact is that only female mosquitoes actually bite you. The males are strictly vegetarian. And the reason that the female mosquitoes bite you is solely because females produce eggs which produce new mosquitoes. And our blood contains amino acids and proteins and everything that they need to grow and produce new beautiful eggs to produce the next generation of mosquitoes. So we are actually fueling the next generation of mosquitoes without even knowing it. So what are mosquito bites? So mosquito bites are those little red itchy bumps that swell up on our body when a mosquito physically 
bites you. Mosquitoes have something called a proboctis, which is one of the coolest words ever, proboctis. The proboctis is actually really developed and scientists have spent their whole entire lives trying to diagram it out and figure it out. And it's actually pretty cool and it contains a lot of really unique sciencey things, which we won't get into today. For the purpose of this video, all we need to know is that the proboctis is like a long nose or a mouth part which physically goes inside the person's body to bite them or sting them. So both male and female mosquitoes have proboctises, but the female is just a little bit sharper so it's able to penetrate skin, bite you, and suck your blood. Female mosquitoes also have these specialized sense organs to be able to find the perfect spot to bite you. And when she does find that spot, she'll physically spit saliva onto your skin to numb the area. Really gross, I know. But she'll spit saliva onto the area to numb the area. She'll grab her sharp proboctis and stick it right into your skin where she'll try to find a viable blood vessel. It's very common that she will not find a viable blood vessel right away, therefore making her get her proboctis and stick it in multiple times, creating more trauma and damage to that area. The number of times that she has to insert her proboctis into you to find a viable blood vessel will Will determine the largeness of that mosquito bite. So if she had to insert 10 or 12 times, you're gonna get a pretty big swelling happening because you have more saliva there, more all of that trauma, just grossness happening. So you're just gonna get a bigger inflammation and a bigger bite. When she does find that viable blood vessel and her proboctis is inserted inside of it, she also injects a little bit more saliva to keep the blood flowing as it would normally, and then be able to suck up the blood like a straw. So think of the proboctis and the whole biting process like a drill that you insert into your skin, just really, really quick, and you don't even feel it. The female mosquito will feed onto you until her belly's full. They can feed up to two to three times their own body weight in blood alone and they'll continue feeding until they're full or you find them and just swap them away. So that's actually how the mosquito bites you but that raised bump is actually your immune system's response to fighting the trauma that the mosquito just gave you. Your body has a built-in mechanism, your immune system, which helps fight away foreign substances that enter the body that they don't know, like mosquito saliva. Mosquito saliva is an allergen. An allergen is anything that causes an allergic reaction. So the second that that mosquito saliva touches your skin, the immune system is responding ASAP, getting there to try to fix the trauma. What's going on here? We don't know, we gotta cure it. We gotta protect our human. The more allergen that's inserted into the body, so the more time she inserts her proboctis into you multiple times, the bigger the bite, the larger the trauma, the larger the swelling, the larger just the overall immune system war battle that is happening. So are some people really more prone to getting mosquito bites than others? Why did my friend get bitten a million times but they didn't touch me? Yes, absolutely. There are many factors that actually contribute to making you look more appealing or more attractive, a more better snack to mosquitoes that make them want to bite you over your friend. First thing is the clothes that you're wearing. So one way mosquito target their victim is through their eyes. If they can see you, they're gonna bite you. So if you wear dark clothing, mosquitoes can find you very well. So things like black, navy, red, things like that that don't blend in very well with your background, they're gonna find you and they're gonna bite you. Your blood type is another one. So surprise, more blood types may seem more desirable to mosquitoes than others. Studies have shown that people with type O blood are more desirable or more tasty, more sweet than our type A and B blood friends. So back in the day when your parents used to tell you, oh, they like you because your blood is sweet. If you had type O blood, that may have been the case. <laughs> Okay, so Wiza, blood's inside my body. How does a mosquito know what type of blood I have? Sorry to let you know, but your body secretes secretions, just things every day that you don't even know that you do, that tell and signal the outside world the type of blood that you have. So mosquitoes can actually pick up on this. That's how developed their, their sense organs are. And they're able to find you. And if you have type O blood, they're gonna pick you over your A or B counterpart friends. Next is carbon dioxide. Mosquitoes are able to send carbon dioxide from over 150 feet away. Us humans actually exhale carbon dioxide. So the more carbon dioxide one exhales, the more desirable they are to the mosquito. Larger people in general just tend to exhale more carbon dioxide than smaller people. This also explains why mosquitoes love flying around our head. You're on the couch and they go vroom right in front of you because your nose and your mouth are exhaling CO2 and they like it, they're attracted to it, and they're just gonna be drawn to it naturally because that's what they do. That's what mosquitoes do. 
heat and sweat are other cofactors that mosquitoes love. So besides things like carbon dioxide, mosquitoes also have a nose for things like lactic acid, uric acid, ammonia, and other chemicals that we emit through our sweat. Strenuous exercise increases our lactic acid buildup, increases your body temperature, as well as increases your sweat production. These are all factors that mosquitoes love. So this is the one time your couch potato self actually pays off because the mosquito's not gonna go to you on the couch. It's gonna go to that guy running outside, sweating, building up lactic acid, and just carrying a hotter body temperature than you are on the couch. So I guess, if you think about it, there is a benefit of being on the couch and being a couch potato in the summertime. And lastly, on heat and sweat, every person has a different amount of sweat and heat that their body produces or chemicals that come off their skin naturally. It's really just a genetic game when it comes down to it, so sometimes you have no control over it. So maybe that whole couch potato thing doesn't really work anyways, so sorry. <laughs> Pregnancy, so it's no surprise that pregnant women get bitten over non-pregnant women. This is because they're physically carrying another human in their body, which means that there's two of them. Pregnant women have increased body temperatures, increased sweat production, as well as increased carbon dioxide production because, hey, you have a human inside you, you're kind of breathing for two, right? You're not only eating for two, you're breathing for two. Given all of these factors that we just mentioned, it makes sense that pregnant women are more prone to mosquito bite. This is actually a very concerning issue in in pregnant women because of Zika virus. Zika virus is a disease that is transmitted through mosquitoes and when a pregnant woman is bit by a mosquito carrying that Zika virus, it can cause major deformalities in children. If you're pregnant in the summertime, you really wanna be cautious of getting any kind of mosquito bites. So taking proper action for prevention and being prepared is key. And lastly is drinking alcohol, which goes perfect with summer. Like we're at a summer barbecue, we're gonna drink alcohol. Hey, you're actually making yourself a bigger target. So when you drink alcohol, your blood vessels dilate and our warm blood then moves closer to your skin's surface. Since now the blood vessels are closer to your skin surface, it makes it even easier for those mosquitoes to get you and take your blood. So a mosquito will first be attracted to someone drinking alcohol over someone not drinking alcohol because the person drinking alcohol will have increased body temperature. When you drink alcohol, it raises the body temperature of you to kind of help fight off that alcohol in your body. In turn, it also increases your sweat production. So the person drinking is sweating and has a higher body temperature than the person not drinking. And that mosquito will go to you. So the clothes that you wear, your body type, your carbon dioxide, your sweat, and your body temperature, if you're pregnant or not, and if you're consuming alcohol are all cofactors that make you a better, a sweeter, a tastier snack for those mosquitoes. So just keep that in mind next time you're outside when the mosquitoes are in full force. So let me know in the comments below, do mosquitoes love you? Are you a tasty snack for them? Next, I wanna talk about insect repellent. Now, this is just an off family care. This is like a powder dry formula, so it's not so sticky and gross. I really like this one, I highly recommend. So it's important to know that bug repellents aren't insecticides. So these are just gonna repel bugs away from you, not kill them. Insecticides physically kill bugs, repellents repel bugs. So mosquito repellents evaporate on the skin and either work by blocking your scent altogether or making you smell gross so the mosquito doesn't come near you at all. So for example, recall that your body produces carbon dioxide as you breathe and you sweat. So the chemicals found in bug repellents and bug sprays will actually mask or cover up the scent of that carbon dioxide so the mosquito doesn't even know that you're there and it just flies right by you onto the next victim. So one of the oldest and most reliable ingredients in bug repellents is something called D-E-E-T. D-E-E-T is short for a chemical called N-N-diethamethatolumide. D-E-E-T is a colorless, water-resistant synthetic chemical, and it's one of the oldest chemicals. It dates back to like the 40s, which has been proven to deter mosquitoes and other insects away from you. There have been a number of studies and theories in how D-E-E-T actually works, but nothing has been 100% confirmed confirmed and proven. There are studies that show that DET works to mask your scent or cover up your scent more than it makes you smell gross. So most studies lean that way. All we know is that bug sprays work one way or another and DET most likely works to mask or cover up your scent so mosquitoes don't even notice you at all. There's also a lot of talk and health concerns about DET saying that if used improperly or too high concentrations, it can be detrimental to your health. It's not like you're putting on bug spray every single day. Well, at least I'm not and I'm only using it if I'm going camping outdoors or something like that. If you use it in proper concentrations and use it properly, you're fine. I probably use bug spray maybe like, I don't know, 
three, four times a year. If you do prefer the more natural route and not using any chemicals at all, some really popular ones are things like citronella and tea tree oil, which have shown to make mosquitoes not notice your scent and not be interested in you. Citronella and tea tree are more of a scent thing. Mosquitoes don't like that smell, therefore will not go near it. And it's also important to know that natural substances will wear off the body more quickly. Things like bug spray, DET base will last about four hours on the skin versus more natural based products, which will last about one to two. Things like DET, citronella, tea tree oil will all ultimately have effects on your body in the long run, just like any other chemical. But just be mindful and if you use these things properly, you're fine. So that completes the science portion of mosquito bites. I hope you learned something cool and something new. Next, I'm gonna talk about this cool little tool that I found on Amazon called the bug bite thing. So I took this guy camping and we were like all sitting by the campfire all day. I was like, if anyone gets a mosquito bite, tell me, cause we need to use this tool. So we were on like bug bite duty. So anytime someone said, hey, I got bitten or I got taken down, we would grab this guy and just start using it right away. It was super fun. And I really got to experiment with it and try it out and honestly I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. For something that doesn't have any extra chemicals and it's pretty much an all natural product to get rid of the bite, I was just impressed. This tool right here is literally called the bug bite thing and it's a manual suction tool that actually helps to expel the mosquito saliva or bug venom from your area and remove that irritant, therefore decreasing your immune reaction and response and decreasing the swelling, uncomfortable itching and just redness, painfulness of the bite altogether. It also claims to work for beast Things and splinters it has this like little sharp edge here which you can use to like scrape out certain things I've never tried that before but in theory it could work so here is the bug bite thing up close so you can see here the end cap is removable and you can clean it as well as turn it to get more small harder to reach areas right here and it's just up and down suction just like that you lower the lever to the bottom, attach it to the skin, and pull up, and it'll create a suction. I'm literally pulling up right now. Look, it doesn't budge, and there you go. It leaves you a little red mark, which goes away in a bit. Next, I quickly just wanted to show you the more condensed, smaller cap. So again, creating that suction, leaving there for 20 seconds, pulling off, and there you go. Bug bite's gone. So for me, when we went camping, this thing actually saved me. It reduced my swelling of my bites so, so, so much. You can literally feel it working on your skin. So when you get a bite and you put it onto the skin and you create that suction, you can feel the pressure of it coming out. I didn't physically see any of the saliva come out because mosquitoes input such a small amount of saliva that it's really hard to see. But if you were doing something like a spider bite or some other kind of venom expulsion, I'm sure you would see a lot of stuff come out because the suction is actually pretty good for this guy here. Immediately after I used this guy, I didn't feel itchy anymore. I didn't scratch. And everyone else who also used this said the exact same thing. They weren't itchy. Yes, the bite is still there. So this doesn't make the bite go away at all. You still have a little bit of a raised bump, but it takes away the itchiness and the discomfort of the bite. And hey, I don't really care if I have like a little dot or a mark on my body, as long as it's not itchy. When it gets itchy, that's when it creates that discomfort. That's when you scratch it a lot. That's when you get scabbing over and it's just not fun. This eliminates all of that altogether. So I'm sold. But the nice thing is also that you do have control of the suction. So if you do feel that the suction is like a little bit too harsh, then just reduce it and you should start feeling a little bit of relief. You'll still get that saliva or that venom expulsion. It just won't be as strong. You may need to hold it there for a little bit longer. I also just found this super handy I can keep this in my bag and it wasn't like heavy and it didn't take up a lot of room so it's really like packing friendly I'm definitely gonna be taking it with me more I really like it I like how natural it is it doesn't harm the skin all of that stuff and it just just makes me less itchy like who doesn't want that so the bug bite thing is approved I would recommend I like it I like it a lot so that's it, that's mosquito bites debunked. And I hope that you learned something new. We talked a little bit about the history of mosquito bites, how they happen, what they are, how we can reduce itching and swelling, and what makes you a prime target for mosquitoes. As well, we talked about bug sprays and the science behind them, as well as this cool little bug bite thing tool to help prevent and protect you from mosquito bites and make you not so itchy and not so swelled up. Let me know in the comments down below if you also get attacked by mosquitoes and mosquitoes love you and why you think that is and what things that you use to protect yourself from mosquitoes. Is it bug sprays? Is it other natural remedies? Please let me know in the comments down below. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch you on my next one. See ya.